given. It's like a love without a lover. It's like honey without the hive. It's like the sun without the sky. What's the use in praying? Staying the way I am, can you tell me? What's the use in fasting and my lasting till the end? I'd rather have the giver, for the gifts they come along. Rather have the composer, for a new life song. Hey guys! Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Butterfly Ambassador Ministries presenting Money Motivations with your host, Jalisa Cogdell. You guys, it's already the 19th of November. My goodness. Like, God is so amazing. We're literally like close to Thanksgiving time. Like, who's ready to eat some great food? Like, I know I am. So, God is so faithful. Um, so I would like to say on behalf of this ministry, happy Thanksgiving to every single person that watches these videos, every single butterfly ambassador part of this ministry. God bless you. I pray that all is well with you and your families. And I pray that you spend time just thanking God for what you have. You know, whether it be your sister, your mom, your husband, your best friend, your pets, you know, if you have a dog, praise the Lord. So I just pray you spend time thanking God for what you do have and who you get to share this holiday with. Because there's a lot of people out there that would love to spend time with their loved ones. I think about the home, I think about the convalescent homes, I think about the group homes. So in this season, if you're able to, you know, thank God for what you do have and if you're able to, Lend a helping hand to someone that's in need. Um, you know, it's it's a blessing to be able to give. So um, think about that for this week. Um, this is the, the season of ingratitude, being cheerful givers. So um, I pray that, you know, in this week, you know, you lend a hand to someone that's in need. All right. So um, I'm excited. God has another word for us on today. Um, I was just spending time with him and he just gave me these three words and I'm like, Oh God, I'm excited for what you're going to say to, to us because I've been hearing this know the blesser in order to receive the blessing. It's better to know the blesser. Blessings are amazing. Like To have blessings from the Lord is, I mean, it's amazing. But to know the blesser for yourself, like depending on him, knowing him, like understanding his ways, submitting yourself to him, surrendering that intimacy you know, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. We all know that in the Bible, you know, knowing someone, you know, and that means intimate, you know, intimate, like the husband and wife, Adam and Eve, they, you know, I believe in the word of God in Genesis, it says that Adam knew Eve, you know, and the bear sons. So knowing the blesser, I mean, that intimacy, that level of just knowing God for who he is and why he's so amazing, why he's so sovereign, knowing Jesus Christ as their personal savior, connecting that relationship to knowing who the father is through Jesus Christ, the salvation, why he was crucified, like knowing that is so imperative for your faith walk, for your journey. So I'm excited for what God has for us on tonight. I pray that you all are tuned right now to just hearing a mighty word from the Lord Jesus. So let's go ahead and just pray in and let the Holy Spirit have his way. So Heavenly Father, we love you. We adore you. Father God, we magnify your name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We usher your presence right now in the name of Jesus. God, have your way, Father God. We just decrease so that you get all the increase, Father God. We come with great expectation to hear a mighty word from you, Father God. We thank you right now for the season that we're currently in. God, we thank you that we're being pruned, Father God, for the glory of you. We are being nurtured, Father God, for the glory of you. We are being matured, Father God, in the word of God, the meat of the word of God. Praise be to God to your name name we are excited and we come with just eagerness and just an open mind and, and a cheerful heart to just you know know who you are father god knowing the blesser knowing why you are so amazing so perfect so we just love you lord jesus we just want to honor you father god we want to know more about you we want to go deeper into the word of god on this evening so father god have your way father god we replace Jalisa's words with your words father god have your way right now in the name of jesus we love you we honor you we exalt your holy name in jesus name we do pray amen all right guys so let's get started if you need a pen shout out to elevation i got a pen here from elevation i believe i went to one of their conferences so Shout out to Stephen Furtick. Praise the Lord. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. 
So if you have your journals, go ahead and write this down. We're going to be going to Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah 29 11. And then we're going to go to Romans 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. So first, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Then Romans chapter 5, verse 5. All right, let's, let's go here. So the first thing that God wants us to know this, our hope is in Christ alone. Like, say that to yourself. Like, my hope is in Christ alone. Um, a lot of us as believers, um, we get to this season where the holidays are approaching. And for some reason, we, we think as though that the holidays are about us. Like, no. <laughs> like, the holidays are not about us. Like, the holidays are actually a season where we get to show others how we love them. We get to honor the Lord Jesus and, and show the love of Christ to other people that may not have not seen unconditional love before. So, in this time, I pray that you understand that our hope is in Christ alone. Your hope is not in your bank account. Your hope is not in, you know, uh, what you can do on your job. Your hope is not in your degrees. Like, your hope is not in that new Cadillac you just bought. Like, your hope is not even in your marriage or your children. Like, those are gifts from the Lord Jesus. Like, your hope is in God. Without God as the center point of your life, you're not going to be under be able to understand the season that you're currently in so when we tap into the word of god we know who our blesser is we know who our provider is we know who our way maker is we know who our miracle worker is we know who our promise keeper is. see when we know who our sovereign god is then we can operate and excel in our marriages and parenting and school you know and on the job with our boss and co-workers see when we know who the blesser is we know who praise god we know who is centered in our lives when we focus on who our hope is in who we depend on why we are on this earth our purpose like the factual reasons why we are here on this earth then our life will flow according to his will, according to his purpose, because he has created us. So in order for you to flow in life, understand why you're here on this earth, dear one, you need to know who your creator is. Your hope is in the Lord Jesus. In order to know the Father, the blesser, you need your hope to be in Christ alone. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ is imperative in this faith walk, this journey. It's a journey. So in order for you to, to endure all things and keep going, keep going the course and finishing the race, you will need to know the blesser. And the only way to access knowing who God is for yourself is through our relationship with Jesus Christ. That relationship is so imperative. Let's go ahead and go to Jeremiah 29 11. Now I have the NLT version. If you are wondering, I have my KJV as well, but God wants the NLT. So let's go here. Let's go to 11, praise the Lord. It says this. A lot of you guys know this is a familiar scripture verse, but for those that don't, it's all right. Here we are. So verse 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Let's stop there. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you. You don't know your end result of your life. No. You don't know how your life is going to be the next month from now, the next week from now. Praise be to God, the next hour from now. You, you don't know. You may have an idea. Idea. You know, you may have like a thought, you know, or you have a written out planner, like you have an appointment here, appointment there, blah, 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 blah. But see, you don't actually know the plans that God has for you if you have not had an encounter with Jesus Christ and that relationship, that that friendship, that intimacy on that level where 
you hear God's voice, where you have dreams, where you can encounter Father God, Holy Spirit. That presence is so radiant. So I love the fact that God lets us know point blank, for I know the plans I have for you. Like he knows them. He already knows who you're going to marry. He knows when you're going to have those babies. He knows when you're going to pass and get that degree. He knows what job you're going to be at. He knows when you will retire. He knows He knows everything about you. He knew you in your mother's womb. Like, let's go to Jeremiah 1 5. Let, let, let's, let's, let's just see what God has to say. Like, I want you guys to understand, like, where God is coming from. So let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, chapter 1 verse 4 through 5 the Lord gave me this message this is Jeremiah speaking the Lord gave me this message I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb do you know how powerful that is like God knew us when we were a seed but yet he still gave his only begotten seed so that we can have life more abundantly I hope you guys are hearing me see God already had a plan for your life before you even were known in this world before people knew you, God knew you. God already knew you. Like it says it. His word says this. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. You cannot come from your dad's womb. You can't come from a hippopotamus or a monkey or a bird. Or No, God has order. God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He formed you. It's not science. It's not medicine. No, like... God says, I knew you before. I hope you guys are catching this. Like, before I formed you. I hope you are catching it. In your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. God has already had a distinction of who he has designed his children to be. We just have the opportunity to choose him. We have free will to choose Father God. But God has already had the plan for your life laid out for you. Before we get to Jeremiah 29, 11, it's already in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, 5. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. You're already appointed. Now, I know there's different ministries that God will reveal to you and different callings on your life and spiritual gifts. Praise the Lord. But God, has, God already has a distinction. Like, he has a distinction of who who we are and why we are his and how to understand who we are from our creator he, god says i formed you you aren't self-made you aren't facebook didn't make you instagram didn't, sure enough didn't make you twitter they just tweet all the time come on they didn't make you like father god is saying i formed you in your mother's womb and let's read a little bit further uh uh, Jeremiah says, oh, servant Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. I want you all to understand this. There are seasons in, in our lives that God is going to stretch our faith. He's going to prune us in areas that are uncomfortable. God can work with you when you are uncomfortable. God can work with you when you have surrendered your all to him. God can work with you when you have nothing left but to call in the name of Jesus. God can work with you when there are things that are out of your comfort zone, when things are like out of your range, like very, very uncomfortable. Like God can work with you because see, he can put that strength that he's already placed in you before you were even born and it can just be rebirthed because sometimes in this course that we call life, we tend to look to other people or look to other circumstances or look to our family life or the what degrees do we have to have to attain XYZ? Um, how do we look on social media to attain XYZ? How many followings do I have? How many likes do I have like to attain XYZ? But in reality, God has said that he already has plans for us. Let me let me go back to Jeremiah 29, 11. I, want, I pray y'all are hearing what God is truly saying to his people. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. It says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. So off gate, if the enemy is sending you anything that is not good, 
rebuke him. Like, you know who you are because Christ is the creator of your life. You have free will to choose God. In order to know the blesser, we have to connect with Jesus Christ. We have to rebuke the enemy, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee. So God is, is showing us here that he wants us to get to know him in a deeper way. The only way we can know God is through Jesus Christ and through development, through experiences, through encounters, through periods where we have to cry out to the Lord, where we have to depend on him, where we pray as on him, where we spend a long time with him. We read his word of praise God. We read his word to ourselves. We understand what God is saying to us in our dreams. If there is a prophetic word over you, you consult with spiritual leaders that know Jesus, that are Holy Spirit led, and then two or three will confirm what God has said to you, for you. Now look what God is saying. God is saying, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Back to our first point. My hope is in Christ alone see god will give you hope it says it to give you a future and a hope god can give you that hope you can't get hope from social media from your degrees from your marriage from your children like those are beautiful blessings from the lord but you receive hope from christ alone like you have to know god through a relationship with jesus christ there's an order god says it here to give you a future so wherever you're at in the season, you're not going to be there always. That's a temporary situation. God wants to strengthen you, Father. Like, the Father wants to strengthen you. How, when's the last time you have thanked God for giving you breath, for giving you your lungs, your heart, your teeth to chew, your ears to hear? When's the last time you thanked God just for seeing your eyesight? We blink all the time. Have you thanked God for your eyelashes? There's been many times I've woken up and there's like eye crust or sleep, you know, in my eye. I'm like, thank you, God, for these eyelashes. Because if not, it would have just been in my eye. I would have been burning. My eye would have been hurting. Have you took the time to thank God for the simple things? That's taking a shower, soap, toothpaste. I mean, the simple things that we just buy or whatever, whatever. But simple things. See, our hope is in Christ alone. It's not in what we can attain or what we can do or how to, you know, impress people. We're here to please God. Pleasing God is vital. People pleasing won't get you anywhere but a disaster. Like God says it. He will not give us a disaster. It says the plans are for good and not for disaster. So if you're in a season right now where you're in a season where it's just difficult for you, you're not understanding what's going on. It's like you just it's like after an attack it's kind of like you're in this mode of not knowing what's going on and it's like you're trying to understand what is going on but you just don't understand what's going on or how you got here have you taken the time to consult with the lord jesus have you taken the time to just speak to him just say thank you father god for who you are i don't understand what i'm going through but god i just believe you're going to see me through this it's so simple as that god can give you clarity God can give you that understanding, but you have to seek him for that. Let's go to Romans 5, 5. Romans 5, 5. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Okay. So Romans 5, 5. Thank you. Oh, forgive me. I pushed mine. Romans 5, 5. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Okay. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know that we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Are y'all catching this? God is so strategic. I'm telling you, to know the blesser is so much more important. Blessings are phenomenal, but knowing the blesser will bless your life so look it says and this hope will not lead to disappointment see the hope that god gives us will lead to more blessings more more newness more more understanding more clarity more freedom more joy more more perseverance we're strengthening in the lord jesus christ because 
He's given us this hope. He's given us this desire in our hearts to fulfill the plans he has for us. We have this unexplainable, unspeakable joy. We walk in love. We walk in boldness. We walk in the truth because God is so amazing. And look, it says this, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. See, he loves you. What you're going through is not it's not just because, like, God has a plan for you. You're on a journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, he has you. We, we heard it in Jeremiah. Go where I tell you to go. Say what I tell you to speak. So you're on a journey. You're on a journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to prune you. He wants you to die to the old ways that you used to do things, used to say things. But he wants you to be developed and matured and nurtured and he wants you to show the love of Christ to people that may not know his love existed before. And I love how he says he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. You cannot receive that love, dear ones, from eating junk food all day or jumping from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend or girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend. To, like You can't receive the love that God has for you, the, the unconditional love that God wants to freely give you. You cannot receive that from being a people pleaser. You can't receive that from, you know, getting, you know, cum laude or all these other degrees. It's beautiful. I mean, praise God for the gift of intelligence. But you cannot receive the love that God has for you from all these material paper things. They're just things. What God has for you is fruitful, is eternal. Let's go ahead and go to this. Jesus spoke to the waves and ceased, and they ceased. He rebuked the storm by speaking to it. And the disciples made it to the other side of, as planned. I'm talking about Peter. Remember when Peter's on the boat with the disciples, and God already had informed them they were going to go to the other side. But there's this attack. There's this storm, this raging storm. I mean, just blowing. Wind, wind's just blowing. Waves just, just roaring. And Jesus is asleep on the boat. And I love this story because it's so powerful. Jesus is asleep, like knocked out. You know, when you sleep, like he is asleep. And the disciples are like, uh, Jesus, can you wake up? There's a storm outside. You know what I'm saying? Can you protect us? You know? But what I love about Jesus Christ, he's asleep. He has no fear. So what that, what that explains to me is God didn't bring that storm to them. Because why would Jesus rebuke it? Jesus is not going to rebuke God. So the storm came from the enemy to shake them up, to rattle them with fear. Remember when Jesus was approaching them, and it's in Matthew, we're going to read it in a second. But remember when Jesus was approaching them, and they were like, who is this spirit? Like, what is that spirit that we see amongst the sea? Like, what, what is the spirit that we're, that we're seeing? And Jesus speaks to Peter, and Peter's like, Lord, this is you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will come to you, you know. And Jesus is like, come. I am who I say that I am. Like, come, I will show you who I am, you know? And Peter's like walking on the water to Jesus. But what happens? He gets distracted. Distraction is a horrible spirit of the enemy. It's this plot that he likes to use with people. He tries to confuse them, tries to shake things up. Try He tries, keyword, he tries to shake things up and make things confusing and just, you know, unbearable, all of their crap. He tries, you know. But I love this part. Let's go to Matthew. It's Matthew 14, uh, 14, 29 through 32. It says, and he said, come. That's Jesus speaking. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. He walked. That's a miracle. Like Jesus, like Jesus was walking to Peter, and yet Peter was walking on water. I love the fact that Peter got out the boat. Praise God. Like, will we get out the boat? I, I, I would actually. Jesus was calling me in Jesus' voice, and Jesus, yes, I'm walking on, I'm walking out the boat. Can't swim, but I just know the Lord is right there, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to walk to Jesus. But look, it says this, and he come, and he said, come. 
And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. See, the Lord has already told us in the word of God, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So that's how I know the enemy sent that wind. The enemy sent those storms to distract Peter. See, Peter could have focused on the miracle. Peter could have focused on Jesus that was right in front of him. But he got distracted. He looked at his surroundings, his circumstance, the bills that need to be paid, you know, the, the arguments in your marriage, how the, the co-worker and the boss is talking about you and gossiping about you. You're distracted with all these different variables when Jesus is just saying, come, follow me. I will show you the way. I have great plans for you. I want you to know the blesser, so come to me. I want you to know who loves you so much. Come on to me. I don't want you to focus on what you see because the word of God tells us as plans day we walk by faith and not by sight so why are you looking at your circumstance why are you looking at your bank account like that's just a bank account the most wealthiest currency we have on this earth is faith it's the wealthiest currency that we will ever have ever like ever Bill Gates can't top faith so like here look it says this and he and he said come come and when peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and began to sink see when your eyes is off jesus you sink when your eyes is off jesus you sink you fail you get frustrated you get distracted you start doubting yourself because the enemy is is attacking you if you have fear within you, how can Jesus, how can you hear Jesus speak to you? How can, it's like cluttering your ears. It's like putting earplugs in. When you allow fear to fester in your heart and you allow the enemy to have those doubts in your mind, you're going to get into this mode of, I'm not worthy or I'm doubtful or God, can I really become this wealthy when I don't have a job? Can I really become this wealthy when I don't have a car? Can I really become this wealthy, Lord Jesus, when I don't have an IQ like so-and-so? I don't have this degree like so-and-so? Father God, Father God, can I really become a mother when I've had up teen billion miscarriages? God, can I really become a mom when I, I, I've, I've had an abortion? I've had a miscarriage, Father God. Like, can I really do this? You call me to this, Father God, but I don't understand. I don't see how it can happen. I don't see how it works. Lord, can I really be called to marriage when I've gone through a divorce, Lord Jesus? Like, can I really become who you call me to be when I've been stomped on over and over and over, Father God? I've been raped, Father God. Can I really be married, Father God? Well, I'm a witness. I can be married. I've been there before. Like, God is trying to show us this. We have to look past what we see. Knowing the blesser does not involve our eyesight. The only way we'll see Jesus is when we go to heaven. I don't have to, I don't have to see God right now to know that he exists. I feel his presence. I see in the spirit realm, but I don't have to physically like, oh God, just let me just hug you. Like he embraces me all the time in his presence. When I sit down with him, when I spend time with him, when I have lunch with him, when I'm at work, when I'm praying is on to him, when I just seek him, when I sing songs on the way to work, when I'm worshiping him, I feel his presence. I know he is real because of what he has told me, the dreams, the prophetic, the, the, the spiritual realm of Father God. I have physically felt him. Knowing the blesser is vital to this faith walk. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Let me finish this up. It says this. But when he saw the wind. See, his focus should have been on Jesus. His focus should have been on the miracle that he's walking on the water. Not the wind. Because look, if you go further down, it says, He cried to the Lord to save me. See, when we get into situations, we well, the first thing we do is, Jesus, save me. Lord, help me, which is a beautiful thing. But it's amazing that we have to get to these points where we're in fear, or we doubt, or we're in trouble. or It's like we get in these situations, and we're like, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Well, if you would have stayed focused on me, you wouldn't be in a situation. You wouldn't be in the in this season that you're currently in if you would just trust me, if you would just seek me. 
you will know what to do. You will know what to say. You will know where to go. You will know who to marry. You will know when that baby's going to come. You will know how to speak with your husband if he's going through something difficult. The Holy Spirit will give you what to say and how to say and when to say it to him. You don't have to clap back all the time. There's a season, there's a timing in what we do and how we do it and when we do it and why we're doing it. But look, God says this, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore thou did wherefore didst thou doubt? See? God is so strategic. He already knew the plan he had for them to get to the other side. But they allowed that wind and that storm and that raging wind to distract them. God already had a plan for them to get to the other side. But they, uh, they allowed for that moment, that wind and that storm to distract them. What storms in your life are you allowing to, to distract you? You can rebuke those storms the same way Jesus, Jesus did. He rebuked it. He spoke to it. He didn't need no black belt. He didn't need no knife. He didn't need no gun. He didn't praise the Lord. He didn't need. He didn't need none of those things. He didn't. He didn't need a scene. He didn't need a fight. He didn't. I mean, he didn't need anything tangible. Like he spoke to the wind. How powerful is that? Let me read to you this. True humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. Dear ones, you have to be pruned. God wants to stretch you in areas that you've never been stretched before. I'm a witness of this right now. Like in the season I'm currently in, like God is stretching me. And I thank God for it because had he not, I would not be grateful for what he's going to do for me in the future. Like a year from now, I already can tell now that like I'm going to be so grateful for the stretching that I'm going through in the season that I'm currently in. But look at this. That's Proverbs 22. 22 4 if you want to write that down uh it was true humility and the fear of the lord lead to riches honor and long life proverbs 22 22 4 but look this is what god wants to write down this is important write down journey journey train your mind to be spirit led train your mind to be spirit led not led by emotions not led by emotions or else you will sink in that situation See, Peter had emotion. He was like, Lord, this wind, you know, I'm walking on water. He was getting emotional about it. If you just listen to the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, he would have continued to walk on water to Jesus. But that emotion, that emotion. So God wants us to train our minds to be Spirit-led. Now, I know us ladies, we get this, you know, stigma that women are emotional. Some of us really are. Yeah. But... The Lord is helping us. The Holy Spirit is our guide, and he's pruning us in these areas, especially when we are married and when we have kids and stuff. Um, but God wants us to be anchored in our hope. He wants us to be anchored in our hopes that we will not sink. He wants us to be anchored in our hope so that we will not sink. The lies of the enemy, like all those tricks and plots and schemes that the enemy tries to throw at us women about our, you know, our weight, you know, and how we look and natural hair this and makeup this and all these things. Like, God wants us to know who we are in him. We are beautifully, wonderfully, and fearfully made. As women of God, I pray right now there's an army of women that are going to rise up and know who we are in Christ. We are more than our bodies. Like, we are more than makeup. We are more than hair. Like, we are women of God. We are so loved by Lord Jesus Christ. We are so dear to him. We are the apple of his eye. In this journey, train your mind to be spirit-led. Be led by the spirit. There's many times, like, I don't want to say things to, to my husband, but the Holy Spirit has been developing me in areas of what to say, when to say it, and how to say things. It's it's a pruning. Like like God has like developed me in areas where um, I literally I literally am not the same woman I was when we first courted, and I love that. I want to continuously grow. 
because I respect my husband. I love my husband. I know the plans that God has for him. Like, I know the fruit that's going to be bearing in our future family, like, whenever God calls us to be parents. I know the fruit that will be birthed because of what has already been planted in my spouse. But it, but it starts with me. The role that I have as a wife, the keeper of the home, the encourager. But it starts with me, like, knowing when to say things, how to say things, when to discuss things, when to not, you know, when to just have fun, you know, when to just enjoy each other, when to just spend time. There's so many things that we need to do, but it's knowing, okay, Lord, when to do these things. And it's a learning process. The same way for you, like, if you're a mom, like, knowing, you know, when to take your children to school, when to feed them for breakfast, when to give them a snack, you know, when to check on the nap times, you praise the Lord, nap times, you know, transitioning them from breast milk to, you know, formula and you know cereal and then babies you know there's there's a timing you would not give your eight month old you know table food you just you just would not do that there's there's certain timing there's certain steps involved that god wants to develop develop us like i was talking to the lord on the way home from work last night and i was saying god wow like god you've really developed me in my driving like i remember when i was in driver's ed i was not the best you know um i hit a parked car you know pray the lord uh but like <laughs> but like there's moments in our lives where god will just prune us he will develop us he'll he'll help us along the way and see god wants us to know him in order to be blessed to be a better driver than I was when I first started, there was a process. There was years of development. There was time. You know, it didn't happen overnight. There was time that God set in place for me to understand how to operate the vehicle. Well, this is the same thing with the ministry. God has time for us to develop in him so that he can operate our vehicle of ministry. Let's go to here. Let's be like Peter. Step out the boat to go deep with Jesus. Walk over the storms that may arise in your life. You can walk over them. You can speak to them. You can rebuke them in the name of Jesus. That bill that's overdue, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. This will be paid. This will be paid. Bills to come. You will be paid on time in the name of Jesus. God, you will strategically show me how to plan according to what the, what the bills are due. Lord, you will lead me on how to pay these bills in the name of Jesus. You will lead me on how to budget for groceries, how to budget for gas, how to budget, Lord Jesus, for necessities in the house, for groceries, you know, for simple necessities. God, you will lead me. You will show me the way, Father God. I believe you. I trust you. I reverence you, Father God. You will show me the way. But can we step on our faith? Can we plot things down? Like one of the things do, plot it down. Wise husbands, if this is an area you're strong in, help your spouse. You know, talk about things. Families, talk about things. Like don't let things go under the rug. Like if there needs to be a problem be addressed, then Holy Spirit, I ask you to lead me in this area. Lead me in this area. If there needs to be something that needs to be addressed, lead me in this area how to go about it. Lord, lead me on all these things. Show me. Teach me. I believe you. I trust you. Write this down. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. That's Psalms 3.3. 3, Psalms 3.3. 3. But you, O oh Lord, you are my shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. Don't hold your head down, dear one. The enemy wants you to have a pity party. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself. He wants you to feel like you are just a scum, like you are just bad, like you are a horrible person. But I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are who God says that you are. You are appointed by the Lord Jesus to be a prophet, to be evangelist, to be intercessor, to be a musician for the Lord Jesus, to be an usher. Like, you are appointed by God to do these things that he has called you to do, to glorify his name. You are those lies for me right now in the name of Jesus. Those lies have no part in your life. For God has already said in the beginning that he has a plan for us to prosper our way, to give us a hope and a future, not disaster. I do not want the believers to have any doubt 
that's not from the Lord. I mean, even God told Peter, and Peter was one of the disciples. <laughs> he God told Peter, Oh ye of little faith, why did it therefore doubt? The plans that God has for you is to prosper your way. God wants you to know the blesser in a new way. There's a new season. Just like the leaves have fallen down, dead, dead leaves have fallen down because they don't belong on the tree. So the dead seasons in your life don't belong within you. Release those to Jesus Christ. Surrender those to Father God himself. Surrender those. S -s Release them. They don't belong in your life. They can't fester in you. Release those dead weights. Whatever is pressuring you, release those right now in the name of Jesus. Release those, Father, because the Father wants to release you. He wants to release you from some areas that you're dealing with in your heart. He wants to release those areas in your heart and release those from you because he wants to love you fully. God is the only spirit that can fill that void of any of you, dear one. You can't get it from social media. You can't get it from drinking. You can't get it from, from having sex with multiple people. You can't get it from, you know, smoking weed. You know, you can't get it from just drinking or eating junk food all the time. You can't get it from cussing like a sailor. You can't get it from joining a gang. You can't get it from mainstream or joining all these things that are on these social media accounts. Like, God can fill that void with his unconditional love. The Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with his love. And in closing, write this down. Surrender. 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 It's a strong word, but it's a powerful word. When you surrender everything to Lord Jesus, he can work with that. He can develop you. He can prune you for what he wants you to do. You are born on purpose. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. You were born on purpose. He knew you before you in the womb of your mother. He loves you so much. You are here on purpose. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1.4 Friends, Knowing the blesser is so imperative to your faith walk. Faith is the most amazing, wealthiest currency that we have on this beautiful earth that God's created. And God is going to stretch you in areas that you've never been stretched before. He wants to prune you because he wants you to know who he is for yourself. You can watch this sermon and, and, I, and I pray that it bless you in the name of Jesus. But God wants you to know him for yourself. He wants you to surrender, stretch your hands to him. It, he wants you to depend on him wholeheartedly. Die to yourself. Be encouraged. He wants you to surrender it all to him. Submit your ways to him. Cast your cares upon him. He loves you. He knows what you're going through right now in the season. He knows your heart. He knows the pain. He knows the tears you've cried. He knows the frustrations. He knows the anger. He knows all these emotions. But he wants you to know him. Father God, I pray that your people have heard your word. And I pray that they spend the time knowing you. Spend the time developing you. Spend the time discerning you. Knowing who you are for themselves. I pray, Father God, that they just have this, this newness that just floods them with love, floods them with just care and concern and they have this knowing that you are in control of their lives, Father God. Lord, I pray right now that your people that are watching this, they repent as unto you. They they have this eagerness to know more about you, Father God. So I pray right now in this season right now that you strip them from anything that's not like you right now in the name of Jesus, that they may have wholeheartedly dependence on you full time. They stretch their hands to you, Father God. They just know that you are in control of their lives, Father God. They, they put down their ideas, their plots, their schemes. They put those things down and they surrender to you. God, have your way right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the enemy right now from their lives right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke him from telling them lies. I rebuke him from any schemes, plots, any anything that's not like you right now in their, in their minds and their hearts, Father God. I pray they just lay it aside. 
and they are filled with your presence. They are filled with your joy, your love. In Jesus is the most precious name that we do pray. Amen. Father God, I just love you, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Father God. I pray your people are listening to you right now. And there's anyone out there that had that does not know you, Father God. I pray that they connect with the, the Lord Jesus Christ with their personal Savior. And if you would like to know Jesus for yourself and to have that relationship with Jesus Christ, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you. Lord Jesus, I desire you. Lord Jesus, I want you to come to my heart. I release everything that's not like you from me right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, come into my heart. Create a new heart within me, Father God. I want to know you for myself. I desire you. Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that I rest in you. You show me the way, the truth. You lead me on all areas of my life. For I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you guys. If you give me a to Jesus Christ, let us know in the email below. It's butterflyambassadors at yahoo.com. If you like any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. God has appointed me to be an intercessor. So uh, any prayer requests you may have, even if it's small, even if it's just, Lord, help me, I can pray with you in the area. Um, God loves you. He wants you to know that he loves you. It's not just words. Like, God loves you. He truly does. You are, the, you are so important to him. He cares for you. He truly, truly does. If you're in a season where you feel like, you just have disgrace or you backslid or you did a mistake or you know it's just like lord i messed up he knows already so repent and ask the lord to help you through it that you will not go back he wants to draw you away he already said you're set apart for a reason he knew you before you're in your mother's womb he knew you were going to be set apart he knew you were going to be different he knew that what you were going to do because you're finding your way back to him he already knows he loves you so i love y'all know that i'm praying for you all know that this season is a season of thanksgiving so reference lord jesus with all your heart just spend time thanking him for all that he is and all that he is growing you to be so god bless you guys i pray you guys enjoy a wonderful thanksgiving eat some turkey and just enjoy, you know, what God is giving you. And if you're not eating turkey, then praise the Lord. You know, whatever God is giving you, you know, just enjoy it. You know, spend good time with your family and your friends. And forgive. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in forgiveness. There's that season right now where family is so touchy. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that's going through spiritual warfare in the family or just brokenness, generational curses, I break those in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit of division right now in the name of Jesus. I call forth reconciliation. I call forth restoration. I call forth peace in the name of Jesus. Mm. Peace in the name of Jesus. Love in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Father God, I love y'all. Have your, have your way, Father God. Have your way in these families. Have your way, Father God. Have your way. Newness. There's a new season for someone out there. There's a family. There's a newness. Newness. A new season for you. So I know you've been going through a lot, but God has everything under control. No doubt. No fear. Rebuke whatever the enemy's trying to throw at you. God's more powerful. He's sovereign. Know the blesser yourself. My name is Lisa Cogdale. I'll see you guys next Monday. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Bye. Give me the creator and not so much the creature. Give me the word and not so much the preacher because